welcome. This is Melissa Armbell with the Stock Swoosh. And I wanted to go over one week of results of the Gap Options newsletter. So this is advanced trader risk, which I'll go over in a minute. You can trade options, however, with a beginner risk. If I have time, I will show that for people in a separate PowerPoint. But the idea of winning, whatever your risk is, is to have a high win ratio. So this week was a 71% win ratio. It was a great week. In fact, every week has been a great week so far this year. Uh, one of the reasons is because the market has had momentum and so have stocks. So you'll see the trades that we did this week. The expiration date was January 14th. So risk was on average $8,000 per trade with a profit of 94675 So there were a few losers. Again, we're gonna go over it. If you are interested in receiving the newsletters, you can sign up for the newsletter. There are no monthly subscriptions and no trials. It is a one-year subscription, or you can do a six-month subscription, which I started this year, which is something new. And again, there's no prerequisites. You can work while you're doing the options trades because you can put the trade in, put the order in, and put a sell order um, while you're at work. So that's the nice thing about doing options. You don't have to sit and babysit it in the morning. So the week of the week of January 14th expiration. Okay, that's what we're gonna that's what we're going over here right now. So win ratio was 71%. There were 10 winners, there were zero break-evens, there were four losers, and then there were 14 trades. Advanced trader profits 94,675. So I've included in here the newsletters that were sent. You receive the newsletter in live time. I many times, and you'll see this here in the newsletters with the timestamp date, I call them in the morning in the pre-market. Why? Because I'm rating the gaps early. I rate the gaps very early in the morning, as soon as I get up. So I may send a trade out at 7 a.m. You can't take options trades until the market opens. So, but you get plenty of time then to situate yourself with what you're doing, okay? So here was the QQQs. So I called this on January 5th. It was a put. I called the 394 QQQ puts. Exit was January 10th. The expiration date was the 14th. This was a nice drop. In fact, I will pull out, I will go to the chart of the market here in a minute and just show you what this market did. I don't have the charts in here for every trade. It was just too many trades. But I'll just show you the market move that this had here um, during this time period very quickly. Now, this trade came in the later, later in the morning, 10.36. Again, you get them when I send them, but I do send most of them in the pre-market. Now, I wouldn't say this is pricey, but mm, this is a medium price point, 450 for one contract. So 20 contracts, risk of 9,000, sold at 22, was a $35,000 profit. Return on investment for this particular trade, 389%. That's fabulous, okay, that's really, really good. And again, many trades are huge, or have huge return on investments because again, momentum and movement. Now let's look at the cues. I'm just gonna pull the chart up here. Oh, I have the cues right up here. <laughs> One, five. So call this here. Boom, get the drop. Here, get the drop. Beautiful move, beautiful move. So again, when I'm doing trades, okay, when we're when I'm calling the newsletters, like what you saw is what you would have received in your email. We're always doing we're shorting gap downs, we're going long gap ups. So the the original call was the gap down in the market here, okay, open to three ninety four seventy four, and getting back to this, I called the three ninety fours, okay. Usually do not call anything in the money. It's usually right at the money or away from the strike, okay? Then on Wednesday the 5th, same day, I called the Facebook 330 puts, which expired on 114. Again, take it, get the drop. This was a short, puts are shorts. Cost was $5, 15 contracts, risk was 7,500. This is not an exact science, you choose your risk. If it's 1,000, you get as close to that as you can. Do you know what I'm saying? You just can't take five trades with varied risks or you're gonna be all over the place with your profits because some trades lose. So if you take one trade where you risk 8,000 and then you take four trades where you risk 1,000, that one you risk the most loses and the rest win, you see you could be upside down. 
and then have a high wind ratio. So the idea is you gotta keep your wrist steady, steady as she goes, okay? And, and really, it's not that hard, to be honest with you. And everyone, if, you're, if you don't know how to figure it out in your head, then buy a calculator. Sold at 14, again, take it, give the drop. Profit was 13,500, return on investment was 180%. That was Facebook. It was a nice one too. In fact, let's pull up Facebook too. So that was that same day. Sometimes I'll call a bunch in one day. <laughs> what was that? Here. Well, that seems like a long time ago in this chart, people. Look at what this stock has done since then. Wow. I mean, that's insane, actually. Like the low today. This is incredible, actually. The low today was 230. So this has moved 100, 100 points, basically. Today is February 4th. This is a month ago. It was one month ago. Look what that stock has done in the month. That's how crushing this gap was. This is a gap down in earnings here. We did that too, but I don't have that in here because that was not the week of January 14th. But wow, that stock has just... Anyways, this was a nice call. I knew that would fall even before the earnings. That's another week, another trade. Uh, call the NVIDIA puts 280, expired 114. Nice one here, boom. Little up pricing, cost was $8, 10 contracts for 8,000. Sold at $22, profit 14,000. Again, if you cannot watch it, you get you, then you have to put a sell order. If you can watch it, the targets are in the letter. Return on investment was 175%. So if you can't watch it, I say put a sell order at 50% or 100%. If it doesn't fill, it's a cancel day order. Or you could put in sell order higher and check it at lunch, you know, see see what's happening with it. Then on Thursday, January 6th, I called the 550 Netflix puts. Again, expired on the 14th. This was $11 for one. Eight contracts is $8,800. Sold at 22. You're in, you're out. You're in, you're out. 8,800 profit, return on investment 100%. I mean, we just had beautiful moves and things. We've had some nice follow through, nice follow through in the month of January to the downside. February just starting, we'll see where February goes. Then I also called the QQQ 380s, all right, January 14th expiration, another punt. Cost was five bucks, 15 contracts, risk 7,500, sold at 11, profit 9,000, return on investment 120%, a good trade. Again, so this was on the 6th, Thursday. For the following week, I usually do the weeklies, for those of you that ask. So like, it depends what day of the week it is. Like on a Monday, I'm gonna call it for the Friday expiration. On a Thursday, I'm gonna call for the following Friday expiration. You know, I'm not doing it so tight where I have to move that day. Then the SPY 466s, I called on, what day was that? January 6th. So January 14th expiration. 470, number of contracts 20, risk 9400, sold at 950, nice trade, 102%, profit 9600. So let's just go look at this one, SPY 466. Get this one, it was Thursday. I was here. Yeah, that, was a, that was a good read on that. So we did the one here, then we did this one here, and then we got the follow through here, which was Monday. Then we had the rally here. I'm just, just showing you what transpired. Then that week we had the rally. I mean, I didn't get through all the trades that week yet though, but then you see what happened with that. I mean, even here, looking like, I mean, let's just look at this. This is a month ago. So we just looked at the at the Facebook. So this is January 6th. Today's February 6th. Market was at 467.83 at the close. I mean, pretend right now it's the close. It's 3.30. We're almost going to close. We're at 4.52. And that's not even at where the lows were, you know. Interesting times, people. Volatile market. So then this one was 172.50 Apple puts. We did this too. Apple fell again. I was reading the market. I was reading the things that were gonna go with the market. I was reading the gaps. So then Friday morning early, 
944. This was called on the 7th. It dropped. These were really cheap. 250, 30 contracts were 7,500, sold at 475, profit 6,750, return on investment 90%. Again, so I kind of stacked these into the week, into the week as, as it continued. And what you could do, I did not do this, but, but this is a personal decision. This is not like a rule. What you could do is you can, you can take some out. So you can get the first drop, get out half, hold the rest or something. So that's another idea. Uh, I don't do that, but you could. Because usually if I'm invested in something, I'm looking at it, I'm either looking at it or I'm not looking at it. And if I have to bother looking at it at all, I feel like I may as well be in a full position. This was 11.19, then on Friday I called another SPY for 60 SPY. Again, let's look at that. So that was the seventh. So I called the 460 spy. That was a nice call. And then we had the follow through Monday gap down and fell. Okay, so this was cheap too for the market. 250, 30 contracts for 7,500, sold at 550, profit 9,000, return investment 120%. So that was a nice trade too. Then we did the QQQs on Monday because we were rocking and rolling, got the drop. That tail was a drop. 375 puts expired that current week, okay, which was the 14th. And I'll show you what happened here. This was crazy. Uh, cost was $6, number of contracts was 12, risk 7,200, sold in the very last day with a partial, partial, saved part of it, but basically a partial loss, 6,000. That was when we rallied back. So I did a new trade in there, which actually you could have taken, you could have got out of it with profit, but I didn't think it was up enough. And so I held it, and remember that was that rally that rallied up. So actually this was up in the initial drop. And I think some people did get out of this with profit, but I wanted it to go more and I thought that it would. It took an extra week. So that was a loss. That was one of the losers. Netflix 530s we did, and this was on Monday. See the time, pre-market. 530s expired 114. 575 was a cost, number of contracts 15, risk was 86.25, sold at 11, profit 78.75, return on investment 91%. Let's look at that. Netflix. That was Monday. Gosh, look at this. This, see, this fell, but the market didn't that week it backed up, remember? Look at this even since that. This is more than 100 points since that. Look at that. Whew, tell ya, it's very interesting times. Spy, then I called another spy on Monday, the 455s, okay? This lost, because again, the market backed up. Market dropped, again, this was up initially, then it backed up, and then it then it ran out of time. It just ran out of time. Part, part of it, part of it with, with options, and you know this if, you, if you're someone that's done options, is not only do you have to get the direction right, which I do a lot, but you also have to get the timing right. Like these puts I got, the, I got the direction right where we were headed. I mean, you can see this here even, even now, but I didn't get the timing right on those last ones there. Let me go back, where am I here? I mean, even now we're under that 455 strike. But I was early in that, and then here was the drop off because we went all the way down to 420, and those were the 455s. So I had the direction right, but I ran out of time. It's you got to get the timing right too. This is a finesse. This is a skill set. It really, really is. I'm very good at it though. But I still have trades that lose sometimes. Tessa 980 puts 114 was the expiration date. This lost. This was expensive too. This can be expensive. Cost was 31, two contracts. Risk was 60 to 100. I saved a little. Basically, it was a bust. That was one of the losers. Spy, then we did the 458 puts on Monday. This one did go enough to move and drop. And then remember, I did the other ones to hold and those that didn't work. So you could have got out of all of them actually that day with profit in that tail. I wanted to hold something until the bigger move, which took an extra week. So again, 275 was a pretty good uh, price. Sold at five, 67.50, 82% return on investment. Nice trade. We did the Amazons, 31.50. This lost, 
never really went anywhere to really get out of it right and was very expensive too. And then ultimately, like I said, we had four losers, 10 winners, and a pretty good week. Again, if you took a risk of $1,000 per trade, you still would have had seven out of 10 winners. It's a good week. So we're getting into still in the middle of earnings season now. We've had a lot of trades even this week. It's interesting because I think this year is not gonna be the year like last year where people think they can just do whatever. And you gotta know what you're doing this year, but I think you gotta do it, know what you're doing all the time. I and mean, that's always been my philosophy. It's one of the reasons I created my system. So the Gap Options newsletter annual subscription, it's 12 months, it's $69.99 for one year. The trades are emailed to you, okay? And if you wanna sign up, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can sign up whenever, as soon as you sign up, you'll start getting the emails. So that's up to you. If you wanna do the half annual, you can do that too, $49.99, six months from whatever you start up. This would even take you into the summer. So you can get through the rest of this earnings season, the full next earnings season and part of the summer one. So this is, this is a good period of time to be in, the, and you can see here how many trades we do in a week. So just looking here at overall, let's pull up this buy here. You know, just recapping here on what we've had to work with since January 1 to do, to, to trade. Most of them have been puts, as you can see. We have done some calls, I will say that. Uh, one thing I've noticed is the calls have been a little pricey and the puts have been a little pricey, which is, you're like, okay, well, what do you mean? I'm talking about things that are at the money. So I've noticed that things are getting a little pricey and for calls and puts, and that's really because of the volatility you're seeing in the market. So when you have something that costs, you know, more than you would expect it to, I should say, if you've been doing this a long time, you kind of know what something should, should cost at the money or far away, depending on what stock you're doing to the market. If that tells me, you know, this is, it's volatility, okay? There's you know, you have a lot of people on one side, then you have a lot of people on the other side. And I hate to say the word betting because what I do use is a system, but most people that are trading do think of it like that. And, you know, I look at it as something where I'm taking calculated risk if I'm taking a trade. So I rate the gap. If it rates 20 points or more, I take it in the direction of the gap. I use my 26 point system. That's how I'm making the options calls. However, when you're doing options, like I said, the price point has to do with whatever you're paying. You can never lose more than what you pay, which is one of the reasons why I don't kill trades in the middle of it, because I effectively, this, the, the risk is the stop. Now, I do know people sometimes kill trades, but then they end up losing in trades that go into work. So I would say set your risk, if you wanna do this, at an amount that you can let the trade play out and do not do more trades than you can afford to do. If you can't do all the trades in one week, then say, okay, I'm gonna do three trades a week. I'm gonna do four trades a week. I'm gonna do five or whatever the case may be, or I'm gonna be in three one time or something like that. It's a pretty active letter. It's definitely worth the money. It's very active. In 12 months, you get a lot of trades in that time. But this year we've been active, even though I feel like I pulled back a bit. As a result of that, again, we're having much, much more wins and larger wins. It's nice to have some big trades. Um, it covers the losses and then you're still up a lot, which is why you can have good profits. Um, but a 71% win ratio is great. So some weeks we have higher win ratios, some weeks a little bit less, but it's that's probably an average, 70, 70 to 80. And it's getting back to the beginning of the year here. January 4, now here was the first day of the year. We gapped up, we failed to move higher, made a new high though on the second calendar day of the year. I mean, you can't ignore that. But really, when you look where we were, 47998, gosh, it seems like we're so far from there right now, people, doesn't it? Like, it seems like impossible we get there. I'm not saying we can't get there, but all the big earnings that would move the market, all the financials, all the banks, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Apple, Boeing, everything that would affect the market, Microsoft too, is, is, is out, is reported. So it will be very interesting to say. We're rallying today. We had mostly good economic news, bad unemployment number, but we, 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 we pushed back. And I'll be watching to see where we go Monday morning. Anyways, if you're interested in the Gap Options newsletter, if you want to sign up, it's well worth it. People are doing very well. Email me at melissa at the stocks, Have a great day, everyone.